Stanford University. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start with uh, a piece of music, so please don't get scared. So um, understanding your reaction to that piece of music is really what my current research is all about. Um, and uh, I'm going to play you some greater and less greater uh, variants of this. But that piece of music should stay in your mind. And you're probably all squirming and waiting for me to play that last chord, which, <laughs> which I may and I may not. But, um, <laughs> but let, me, um, let me start with some core questions and then get back to this piece. So um, there's been a lot of debate recently about is music purposeful? Is it, is it a, a product of evolutionary ad, ad, adaptation? Um, and there are a number of varying uh, uh, theories about it. One is that it's not at all. This is uh, Steven Pinker's idea, which he calls auditory cheesecake. That music has no real purpose, but it's pure pleasure. By the way, when you look at a, at a picture of a piece of cheesecake, um, those of you who are in the audience who are cheesecake lovers will salivate. I mean, your, your response to that cheesecake is very visceral. Similarly, when you think about a piece of music that you like, or when you, when you think about that missing chord at the end, our brain is, is responding to that music. We were talking backstage about, about measuring responses, and we can actually tell what it is, not only where it is and when it is you're, th you're thinking the next event will be, but what that ev event is. Um, on the other hand, Charles Darwin referred to music as, uh, a, a, by analog as, as, um, as a similar or analogous to peacock feathers. So for Darwin, there was a, uh, a component of sexual selection and mating. When you think about music, um, uh, the vast majority of, of music in the industry is made for um, adolescents. It's very often or disproportionately male singing to females. Um, the concept of a serenade and being out in the balcony. So Darwin jumped on this idea, um, which is, is actually consistent through cultures and over time. I'm going to suggest today oh, wh another, another possibility is that um, music serves a social function, that it, it binds society, it creates social um, um, uh, uh, social coherence and social, social integration. There's also a physical action of entrainment and synchronization in, in music, which is uh, another possible adaptational theory of music. I'm going to um, uh, propose today that um, it really is about learning about the expectations um, and to process those expectations that were basically talked about both in the learning phase and in what, what Baba was saying. And so, the idea is that music um, is all about understanding and learning expectations, and perhaps that is the, uh, the evolutionary purpose of music. So, um, so a few core concepts here before we get into the, into the music itself. Daniel Dennett talked about, about um, the mind as being an anticipation machine. He said that the mind is really all about building futures. Um, and in a classic theory of learning, um, called the Rescorla Wagner theory, there's a, there's a model that shows that we learn through understanding discrepancies between what we think will happen and what does happen. Um, this notion is actually increasingly uh, supported by neuroscience. So, um, in a, in a, uh, um, sorry, I swapped my slides here. Um, but we, but we learned that, that um, these things often happen. When we expect, in, in, when, when what we expect to happen is different than what actually happens. In music, we can also hear that what we expect to happen happens a bit too early or sometimes a bit too late. So when things happen become a, f a key component in how we process music. So, recent studies in surprise and learning are beginning to tell us more about 
about where and how these things happen in the brain. They, a lot has to do with dopamine, uh, dopamine release, and a lot has to do with um, what's, what's uh, increasingly looked at in the frontal, prefrontal cortex. Um, studies have been, have been validating this idea of, of learning and breaking it down into two different components, components of serial learning and components of target detection. So if you think about the example that I just played with musically, there's what, ha what, what you expect to happen and, and the wrong thing happens. That's, that's the wrong target. And what you expect to happen is out of order, which is not quite what we heard when what we heard happened too early. And that's actually um, a piece of the music puzzle that I think is very enriching in terms of, of neuroscience. Now, Baba just told us about, about emotion and music, uh, emotion and, and predictions. And let me just give you two quick stories here and tie it into music. So um, last night I was driving and a police car pulled up behind me and its lights were flashing and my son, before I left, said, remember your, break, your directional signal is out. And so I said, oh God, he caught me. And um, I turned the corner um, expecting for him to pull, pull me over, but he then zoomed in front of me and got the person in uh, the car that, in front of me. Um, and my reaction was, whew. Um, <laughs> On the other hand, I spent a significant amount of my time in, in Israel, and Israel has this uh, social convention. Of when you go to someone's house, there's always drinks and, and crackers, and these crackers are generally of two types made by the same company, identical looking. One is very salty, and one is very sweet, and you never know which one you're going to get. Right? <laughs> so imagine biting into something, thinking that you're going to eat something sweet and having this salty surprise. So the, the emotional valence of these expectations are, is really quite a, uh, um, uh, an important piece of this. Um, this is a picture of, of former President Bush when he, um, when he failed to open a door that he fully believed was going to be unlocked. And so, when nothing happens, when you expect something to happen and it doesn't happen, there's an even stronger surprise. Now, all of these find, even in the little examples in music that I gave you, all of these find um, instantiations in music all the time. And so one of the things I'm going to propose is that that perhaps is music's primary purpose. Now, um, we'll, we'll depart from shave and haircut, and let me play you a little snippet of a, of a symphony, a Symphony 104 by Haydn. exactly the shave and haircut example. So, um, so I'm going to zip over this because my time is running out, but, um, but we think about, about surprise in terms of children. Now, um, how many of you, in honesty, think, look at this and say, thunder and lightning? Yeah, most of you, right? Now, it's, it's remarkable from a musical point of view that all of, we, uh, all of us adults, uh, alumni, faculty, um, put the thunder before the lightning when we know full well that the flash comes before the sound. It's that auditory surprise, the auditory component, that's so important to us. Um, the game of hide-and-seek is a musical game in which children plan and, and build expectations and, um, and rehearse them time and time again in all different varieties. <laughs> So Marvin Minsky, the father of artificial intelligence, wrote a paper years ago that actually changed my life. And he asked the simple question, when we listen to Beethoven's Fifth, we're basically hearing something that's incredibly redundant. If you count the numbers of da 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 da's, it goes in the thousands, right? <laughs> and, and he says, why is that the case that we're so interested in it? And his, his theory was that we play, we learn to play, we have nothing to learn about playing with time that children learn to play, learn about space by playing with blocks and putting things into these components of time like da 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 and, and transferring is a way that humans learn to play about space. Um, this is a, an experiment that we did here at Stanford 
where we had um, people listen to music. The countdown here, now, now watch what's happening in the brain. You'll notice that when it got to zero, there was this pregnant pause. There was a, pause, a segment pause between two structures. You'll also might have noticed, I don't have time to replay it, but you might have noticed that, that two networks, two integrated networks started. One was a network that says, that's predicting where the end is going to be. And that, when the silence happens, a new network actually starts, and its activation peaks at the silence that says, here are the expectations that I need, to, here's the stuff I need to remember, and here are the expectations that I'm building. So this is actually a pretty nice substantiation of Minsky's idea. This is um, uh, a, a, an experiment that we're doing right now where we're using EEG, as was described before, to look at violations of expectation in harmonic progressions. Um, so just to talk you through it quickly, the blue line is the expected line, and where you see this peak, I don't have a, a pointer, but um, I'll play it and then I'll point. So that's the normal one. That's a, a slightly slight violation. That's a bigger violation. Bigger violation. And that's the silent one. The black one, of course, is the silence. And you see that the brain responds to this surprise um, most profoundly. And it sequentially um, uh, uh, responds to surprise in the way that, um, that we would have uh, expected. So in summary, music helps us to formulate expectations when they fail in terms of what, in terms of where, in terms of when, and when not. Thank you. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.